Amen. Blessings, 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 and welcome to the Promise Talk Show. I am your host, Dr. Roberta Washington. I am so excited about our show on today. We wanted to have a show dealing with marriages, uh, and I think we're going to have some consecutive shows, maybe not totally back-to-back, -back, but we're going to have some consecutive shows about marriage. Listen, this is the Promise Talk Show. Our scripture is 2 Corinthians Chapter 1, verse 20, where the promises of God are yes and in him, amen. And as we get ready to get started with this show, we want you to like, tag, and share. Like, tag, and share. Invite your friends. Listen, invite married couples. Invite um, single women, single men. We're going to address some amazing topics on today. But before we even get started, I want my amazing co-host, I've been missing her. Listen. The holiday resurrection weekend had me and Pastor Smith. We listen, we were just strung out trying to get ready for that thing. But I miss my co host, I miss this show. And so, Miss Tony, go ahead and introduce yourself, speak to our audience. Hey, it's been a while <laughs> having it. I'm like, wow, I'm ready to get back on uh, with the promise uh, TV and boss of Houston. Uh, God bless. It's amazing um, that we have had this opportunity together over the last year and prior. So I'm so glad to be back and part of this platform. And hi, Lady Nicole. Welcome today. I'm excited about this topic. And um, hey, let's get into it. Amen. Well, before we even get started with our show, I just want Lady Nicole to introduce herself as well as tell us about her amazing church and her amazing husband and where they're located. Amen, amen. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Washington, as well as uh, Sister Smith, amen, for having me on. I'm so, so grateful for you guys. I am Lady Nicole Smith. I uh, co-pastor with my husband at the Household of Prayer, Full Gospel Baptist Church. We're located in Houston. Uh, and also we've been married 21 years, nearly. This June will be 21 years. So we're really excited. Look, he 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 thinks he's on the show, y'all, but uh, we're really excited. <laughs> hey, Amen. Listen, he can slide up a chair and be on the show with you too. That is fine <laughs> with us. That is fine with us. He is welcome to be on the show with you today. Listen, our audience, as I, you know, again, this show I think is so important, especially for right now. I am just noticing there's so many people that desire to get married. They have questions about why am I not, um, not, not married? You know, what am I going to do? My spouse, you know, um, they have all of these different questions and things that, that people are having as it relates to marriage. And so I said, okay, let's get together and let's get this, uh, let's get us, uh, this show going so that we can talk about marriage specifically for me, my reason why my, why, what is your why? <laughs> not why did I get married, but my why on why I wanted to do this show is because what I believe though mostly is that we have um, an unrealistic expectation when it comes to to um, to God connecting. Let's just I want to go there to God connecting you with the mate that He has predestined for you to be with. I think that. In the church, we've also presented it so wrong to a certain degree. And then we don't have a clear um, understanding about marriage. And then people see divorces. So then they go, okay, why should I get married? Because everybody seems to get married, get divorced, get married, get divorced. So why is this so important? But then they still desire it, Lady Nicole. They still desire to be married. But they have this question you know, of why should I get married? Everybody is getting married, get divorced, getting married, get divorced. So what's the point? And so the first question that, that I have here today um, is although God desires that we are in a covenant, 
getting married has become less appealing for so many people. Should marriage be the goal? Should that be the goal post, Lady Nicole? <laughs> I actually believe that it should be the goal. Uh, I, I think that if it was in the mind of God, then surely it should be a goal of ours. We know that Genesis 1 and 20, I mean, Genesis 2 and 18, where he tells Adam, you know, it's not good for you to be alone. He, he'll make for him a helper. So if it's in the mind of God, surely it should be a goal of ours. And I just believe that it's not, um, it's not desired of a lot of people, and especially in the body of Christ anymore, because I believe that a lot of people don't have an appetite for accountability anymore. So I, I really don't want to be held accountable, you know, so therefore marriage equals accountability. And I really don't need him telling me where I can and cannot go. So I just don't want to be married. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Well, I, it, and also I think marriage should definitely be the goal. I think that a lot of people, what I'm finding too, a lot of women are saying, um, now this is on the women's side. Um, a lot of women are saying, no, men don't want to be married. That's wow. what they're saying. They're saying men don't want to be married. They're saying that um, that if they desire to be married, they're being, they feel like they're being forced to, um, to let go of their standards pre prior to marriage, whether it be celibacy or, you know, or, or that, you know, they desire to have you know, there may be a person that's saved in church, all of those. And so what I'm finding, a lot of women are saying that, that it's, they're having a hard time with finding a mate or a spouse that is willing to accept their prerequisites as it relates to marriage. Now, I want us to really get into it because I believe that there are some singles, <laughs> not just married, but I believe there's some singles, Miss Tony, that 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 really are trying to get some answers as it relates to being married, you know. And I'm just let's just go here right quickly, you know. Let's just go here um, before we take our take, you know, before we even um, have to take a break. But um, the question is, why did I get married? And yeah. so I'm going to say that for me, and then I'll go to Miss Tony, and then back to you. For me. I got married because I believe that that's who I am. And so I never, I've never had a desire to date. And I'm, I'm talking about coming out of my, my parents' home. I never, even in the high school, I never wanted to be a dater. I wanted to be a wife. I, I knew that I wanted to be married really in my heart to one man for the rest of my life. I that I knew that about me. And so I knew myself that I didn't want to date. Dating was not appealing to me. That was not something I wanted to do. So I'm married because I want to be married. I don't want to date. I I love catering to my my husband. I love doing that. I'm married because I I desire to be a wife. And so that's my why when, you know, the question on the table, why did I get married? Miss Tony, what's your, your why for why you want to be married? Well, I'm like yourself, um, Dr. Roberta, because um, I didn't want to date anymore. You know, after I had my three kids and I stayed celibate for almost three years, um, prior to being celibate for those three years, I studied the word. I wanted to educate myself biblically about the covenant um, and why I was in the process of before I started dating. Then I, um, while my husband met me, we met each other. He, you know, so he found me and I was reluctant a little bit about a lot of things. But uh, again, I wanted to uh, get into the covenant and I wanted to uh, be obedient to the word. And I wanted to grow in the word while I was, you know, growing into my relationship with my husband. Of course, it was important that he knew the word too as well. And so uh, as um, I got married for those particular reasons more because I wanted to be obedient to Christ. And then once I knew that I was going to be obedient with the covenant, I knew that God was going to be in the midst of our relationship and our marriage. Amen. And Lady Nicole, why did you get married? <laughs> Well, I, I wish I could say it was for the reasons you guys said, but look, I did date. I, I probably dated too much and those didn't work out. 
so um, I would say I did, after doing that, I really I thought it was key what Miss Tony said because that became uh, that became my story because I really wanted to be in covenant. You know, as I began to get in the word, I understood what it meant to be a wife, and I knew that the life I was living was not what God had intended for me. So I started like her. I started studying the word. I started studying what it meant to be a wife. And then I desired to be married. It was like, oh, I want to be a wife. You know, I, I want to be covered. And that's that's what it was. It, it drew me to wanting to be somebody's wife. Wow. And, and I can say as well, again, because many people have many questions and especially um, especially as it relates to marriage and you know, and being with that one that God has predestined or intended for you, I can say um, one of the things that I said to many of people was, um, especially for me, divorcing and then getting married again, is that a lot of time for me, uh, because I care about people's feelings and things like that, it's difficult a lot of times for people in ministry to talk about what happened in the past yeah. because people really want to know or because they want to be educated, but it's hard to, to talk about something from your past without defaming somebody else. And so as my situation unfolded and, and, and when you're a pastor, even though I'm, I, I don't feel like I'm on a large scale or anything like that. I, when you're, pretty much in a limelight like I am, nothing that you do is secretive. Everything is exposed out before people and people have questions. But again, for me, um, I did not want to, I didn't want to put a story out there and he, to defame him basically. Because the only way for you to tell your story or get your story out there or whatever, a lot of times it you have no choice but to defend yourself in the midst of people with accusations and everything. What I can say is that I can say beyond a shadow of a doubt that a lot of times we marry for the wrong reason. Yeah. And we try to make it, we try to make it into a covenant, but if it, it never starts out as a covenant, it won't become a covenant. Now I will say that to people, if it doesn't start out as a covenant, you, it's nothing you can do to make it a covenant. It's nothing you can do. The Bible said what God has joined together, mm -hmm. let no man separate. Okay, now now the reason why the body of Christ is having such a fit when it comes to a lot of things and when we do see divorces and things is because a lot of people don't want to be real about why they got married in the first time. In the first place, it was never a covenant. A lot of, a lot of people get married because they just want to have sex. That's right. A lot of people get married because, and I can say at that time, years ago, almost 20 years ago, it was for, for me, it was for financial, you know, trying to get some financial stability around, you know what I'm saying? So you, and, and for him, he was just, you know, just wanted somebody in the house with him. So it's like, I, a lot of times we get married for the wrong reasons. Then when it don't work out, then we do look crazy or whatever, or we out there about it. But the reality is this, is that what I would tell people is focus on what God has joined together, what God joins together, because no matter how much you, no matter what you do, if it's literally not covenant, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. No matter what you do, it's not going to work. And so um, the, I'm just going to go on to, to um, the next question here. Uh, looks mm -hmm. like we do have time. Do you feel marriage is difficult to maintain, Lady Smith? I'm going to say I do believe that it's difficult, but I'll say not impossible. Um, and the reason I say that is because the, the scripture teaches us that as believers, you know, many are our afflictions that can be in marriage or anything else. We, we understand that that challenges are going to come, but it's not impossible. And I believe if you commit yourself to doing it uh, God's way, like that was key with uh, Miss Tony was saying that she studied the covenant way. You know, she wanted to know how to do it God's way. And a lot of times we don't do that. Like you were saying, we just kind of jump in 
you know, and then we then we get saved and now we just want to slap this Christian label over our mess, you know, but no, you, you really have to go back and research, you really have to go back and see what is it God had in mind for marriage, you know, and yes, it's, it's very, it is difficult. Um, but like I tell everybody, it's not impossible. You know, we don't leave our jobs when it get difficult. You know, you're going to stay, you know, and I don't, how much, how, it doesn't matter how much you don't like it. You don't leave and sell your house if you find out you have termites. Oh, wow. You stay, you know, you, I'm not going to sell my house just because, you know, I got a roof leak or something. I'm just going to fix it. I'm going to fix my roof leak and I'm going to continue to pay my mortgage. And the goal is what? To pay it off because this is my house. So, and I just believe that's the way we should look at marriage. Don't be so quick to just, you know, run out just because it's difficult or it's hard. Amen. And, and that's, that's absolutely right. I think that, that again, is it difficult to maintain? Cause again, we just going to dialogue about it. Is it difficult to maintain? I, I wouldn't say, like you say, I don't, I wouldn't say, I do know there are a lot of challenges. Yeah. So we just got to be real about that. There are a lot of challenges. And the reason why is because you have two people coming from two separate backgrounds, yes. raised by different parents in different neighborhoods, most often different states or cities and all of that. So you have two people coming together, two different family. That, you know, it's like um, I was listening. I've been I, I watch a lot of the marriage, um, the marriage clips that Bishop Jakes puts out. And he talks about how um, his family is loud and. Um, everything that they do is loud <laughs> and, and they talk loud, they laugh loud, they everything. And then when he goes over to his wife, <laughs> when he goes over to his wife's family, everybody is quiet and monotone. He said he feel like he's about to lose his mind, but it's two totally different types of families coming together. And so that, um, that, that man came out of a family, a certain family you came out of a certain family you know what i'm saying so yeah. therefore here you are coming into a marriage covenant together and sometimes that can be a a, a challenging situation because the backgrounds are so different and the way that he was raised to handle his you know children and and all of that he's basing that off of his parents and their, um, you know, the way they raised him and then the way we're raising. And see, for me, believe it or not, a little differently, though, for me, <clears throat> my father, some of the, the, the technique, techniques and things that he used to raise us, I was determined not to. <laughs> I was determined not to do that, not to, um, to, to, to respond to my children or to behave, you know, in that manner as it related to my children. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a break. Amen. We're going to take a short commercial break here. Listen, you all go and grab somebody. Like, tag, and share. Like, tag, and share. We're going to be inviting people onto this live. This is an amazing dialogue. And I just thank God because we have a seasoned guest here, Lady Nicole Smith. Amen. So we will be right back after this commercial break. Don't move. Stay with us. Boss up, you see, you know why?
Amen. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. We are having an amazing dialogue. Why did I get married? Listen, I am, I'm thankful and grateful that I am married. Um, again, I can say, I, I've, I've said it once on the show and I, you know, and I'm, I'm okay with it. And especially I think um, because my ex-husband passed away, it does give me a little bit more grace to say things um, that were going on in, you know, uh, not to go deep into it or whatever, but to just say certain things that were going on. Because again, in order for you to tell your story, it causes you to have to defame somebody. And I don't ever want to do that because he was a very, very nice person. And he was a very good person. Um, he just, it was more, uh, we had more of a roommate situation. And when you're a pastor, you, you're trying to maintain a church and then you're living life at the same time um but um a few people knew amen because you know there was uh, much counsel needed but you know i was in a um a very long celibate situation even married and that's something that's a conversation that i want to have uh with some married people that may even be dealing with that um, to be married and celibate. That is a very, very sensitive subject. And it is very, very difficult to maintain. It's very, very difficult. And, but there are some reasons why that may be happening in the marriage. So we definitely want to counsel. Every situation does not have to end in divorce. It does not have to end in divorce. Um, but again, a lot of transparency has to go forward. I would say and that second question when that we ask, why is marriage hard to maintain or is it difficult to maintain? It is difficult to maintain when you don't have communication or that level of transparency or there's some things going on and one person, because you did not come to the altar by yourself and you cannot counsel by yourself. You cannot fix the marriage by yourself. There are two people standing at the altar and it takes two people to manage and stay married. That is what I would say, would, which would make a marriage difficult when you have one person that's really doing all they can to try to make it better, but you have one person that is almost uninterested in making it better or making any changes in the marriage. And so I would say that that would be um, why it would be difficult. Um, it'd be difficult to maintain. And so, um, Lady Nicole, you have anything to add to that? Why it's just difficult to maintain or if it's difficult? Okay, unmute it, Miss. Um, it's muted. There you go. I was saying that you were right, um, that it is difficult, um, and especially when you have the one person trying, the other person not so much. Um, and I was getting ready to say, when you spoke of the transparency, what I was going to say was not that many, maybe about two to three years ago, my husband and I went through some rigorous uh, counseling ourselves, uh, like you were saying, because as pastors, um, there's not a lot of people that you can really talk to about whatever's going on in your house because you're expected to not have these issues. So, but we did have some, you know, good friends of ours that are pastors also. And we went to them because our marriage at that point had reached a, a plateau. You know, it, it was, it had been hard to maintain. And we both realized that, no, we, somebody has to intervene here because uh, we're, 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 look, we're headed for a crash. So um, we, we went on and decided to have them to come in and really show us us, you know, because when you're in the thing, all you really see is the other person's fault. You know, she did this, he did that, you know, and if he would do this, if he would just change, if she could just do this, and if her mama wasn't so, you know, just, just all of that stuff. And if we could really just push all of that stuff on the side and get back to just you and I, you know, can, can we just get back to you and I? 
And I, I believe a lot of stuff like that is what makes it difficult, like you're saying, to maintain because there's so many other things pulling on your relationship. You know, you got the kids, you know, and like you said, our different styles and, and, and also in transparency, our styles were very different. You know, my, my husband comes from a background where they, they use their hands for discipline. I was accustomed to my father using his belt or we had some form of punishment. So we would always clash with that. We all, you know, we would always clash with that. But our common ground, because we were in covenant, we, we, you know, was the word of God. You know, we decided, well, okay, not your way, not your way. But what does God's word say about disciplining your children? And, then, you know, we just decided, okay, that's, that's the way we're going to go then. But, yeah, absolutely difficult. Not impossible, but it is difficult, yes. Yeah, and of mm-hmm. course for me, uh, as far as can I kind of chip in a little bit about the difficulty in the marriage and maintaining it, um, you know, um, like Dr. Roberto, you know, me and my husband is pretty much an open book too as well in the community. Um, so many people know us. He was a coach and, you know, along with the other things that he was going through, I had all reasons people would say to divorce my husband because he was a crack cocaine addict and things out the house was missing and cars was gone, money was missing. And I had to repeatedly go through it over and over and over. Um, but at the same time, um, um, you know, for me to maintain, I had to seek help for him and I had to be there to be his partner you know that's part of the covenant I had to be his partner and I had to find things that was wrong with me that I bought into the marriage so for as maintaining the marriage um maintaining is fine but to find those 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 things you know uh that's what we had to do we had to go to the root of it it took years six separations but you know now out of those six separations I can say it's good now so you know um what can I say Amen. And, and yes, I think that to me, what I've noticed though, is, is the lack of desire to seek counsel. I think that that is, that is one of the most critical pieces as it relates to staying married. Um, Not, not about being married, but about staying married. I think that it's just, for some reason, it's just very difficult. And I'm going to say this, Women are more quicker. We, we're, we will go to counsel quicker than men. I don't know why, but most often men will wait until the 11.59th minute before they actually accept to go to counseling. Um, but and, and the reason why, and if there are men listening, the reason why is because a lot of times I never get somebody asking me <laughs> I was asked one time when I when when I was asking about counseling and they were saying to me, you know, I don't want to go to counseling. Why do we need to go to counseling? We can sit and we can talk and we can reason with each other. The Bible says reason together. And I said, because how do you talk to the problem about the problem? The problem is not going to admit to being a problem. And so I, I'm always an advocate that there sometimes needs to be a neutral voice that can listen to both sides. And I think what also some men don't understand, you're going to find out that the woman is not going to get the answer that she wants all the time either. Counseling is not against the man, but that's how it's perceived. Because just like um, uh, uh, Miss Tony said, just like she said, uh, in a lot of what I have had to figure out were, were issues within myself. You know what I'm saying? It was issues within myself, insecurities within myself, things that happened to me when I was a child within myself, fears that were put in me when I was a child, you know, things like that. Okay, so counseling is 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 going to help both people if both are willing to, because yes, you're fighting and arguing and all of that, but just because the the wife is asking for counsel does not mean the wife is going to get all the answers she wants and that the counselor is just going to sit up there and agree with the wife that's not going to happen either if you if you choose a neutral person that does not that is not partial to to your story or to what's going on they're going to be able to counsel you from a godly perspective and that godly perspective is not going to be based on whether they know the wife or whether they know the husband and the wife is often wrong as well because 
when you date a strong woman, a woman that's been paying her bills all the time and all of that type of stuff, a lot of our behaviors are out of order as it relates to marriage. We are not the head of the household. And a lot of our responses to our husbands are based on us being head of household when we're single. But now that we're married, then somebody else has to come in and put that thing in perspective. I know that you don't trust him, but the Bible has nothing in it that says that he has to submit to you or that you can't give him, you know, the respect or give him the responsibilities that he's supposed to have just because you're used to, you know, running everything. You know what I'm saying? So we have to make sure that we understand that um, that marriage is marriage is ministry. The one thing I've said before, and I'll keep saying it, marriage is for grown folks. No children allowed because this thing here is serious. And so we're going to go on to the next. It is serious. Yeah. It's serious, and, and, I'm telling yeah. you. And I wanted to also say really quick that when you have um, a marriage where you have children involved, like a blended family, that's another thing. It's hard. Now, as far as maintaining, that's very difficult in some situations if you don't nip but that at the beginning, right? Because with me personally, I know we're getting ready to go to break in two minutes, but um, with me personally, that's that's been a struggle because my kids are grown now and uh, it's a lot of respect and, and issues going on between that, but then you have God, but then you have your children and then you have your husband and you know, it's, it's difficult. So maybe we could talk about that a little bit when we come back. I don't know <laughs> we need to. <laughs> I mean, definitely blended families can be, that can be, wow. It, it, it can be because you have to give time and respect for that blend to happen and happen in a way that is not just respectable to the adult, but that that respect is there for the child as well. And sometimes that's not even the case because people don't respect the child's voice. And so we, we definitely can dialogue a little about that. And so y'all listen, this conversation is excellent and amazing. Why did I get married? Listen, why don't you go and grab somebody else because we're dealing with some really serious conversations here and I love it. I love it. I love it. We're going to answer those questions. If you have questions, put them in the live. We're going to answer those questions if we can, but we will be right back after this short commercial break. So don't go nowhere. Stay right there. We'll be right back. <laughs> watching a great show on Boss Up Houston Network. Have you heard? They're bossing up, okay? And I heard they're looking for you. Any podcasters, talk show hosts, if you're a writer or producer, we definitely need you. Come aboard and boss up. Are you a small business owner that is struggling to promote your company? Our topic today is what's your status? Shoot the dice at this yeah, point. Yeah, just shoot the dice. Roll the dice. So... Hey, how y'all doing? It's attorneys. Uh, all right. Bye. Bye. I love it. Imagine being televised on a national platform. How about being a host or sponsor on a syndicated podcast? Or being featured on an exclusive promotions and interview for your product to your ideal customer? Hi, I'm Kayla Sneed, and I'm head of sales with Boss Up Houston. And here at Boss Up, we like to help small business owners and entrepreneurs advertise, promote, or become a sponsor for one of our television, podcast, or radio shows. All you have to do is click the link down below to see if you qualify. I'll be seeing you soon. This is Boss Up Houston, where we look up, stay up, and boss up. Amen. We are back. We are back with the Promise Talk Show. And we have an amazing conversation going on here today. We are talking about why did I get married? And uh, we were talking about the difficulties in marriage and how, you know, a lot of times counseling is needed. Counseling is needed. 
because a lot of times we don't know that we're the problem. And I said, sometimes it's difficult to talk to the problem about the problem. You know what I'm saying? Because if I feel like I'm right, if I feel like I'm right, and I feel like, um, you know, that no matter what you say, I'm right, then I, there needs to be a neutral voice that can come in and be the voice of reason. But then because we are Christians and believers, we really need Christian counseling. And, and I will say this too, uh, Miss Tony, throughout my, my time frame, you know, because again, I really have been married since I left my mama's house. My children's father, my oldest kid's father, he passed away. Um, and now my Emmanuel's father passed away. And so I'm married now. You know what I'm saying? I've been married since I left my mama's house, which is what God know. That's what I ask for. I, I don't want to be single. And so, but I will say, I thank God though for the Holy Spirit. Because in a lot of times when I did not have I did not go to counsel and I didn't have godly counsel. It was God who dealt with me in my prayer closet about me, my attitude, my way of thinking. Um, and, and so being a believer helps. Being, being equally yoked to a believer that really has a prayer closet or, or is talking to God, or at least you're going to the local assembly because you might get in a fight in the car on the way to church. And I'm telling you, I've, I've said this before, Lady Nicole, that it is very important that you're equally yoked going to the same household of faith if you can, because I'm telling you, people think that pastors are talking about you over the pulpit. And again, I say sidebar, some of them might do that. I'm not saying that all that, that it hasn't happened, but what I always tell people, you have to understand that Pastors are supposed to be led by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit knows who's sitting in the building. And so when you hear a pastor or a pastor say, I don't even know why I'm saying this or whatever, it is because the Holy Spirit knows who's sitting in that building. And a lot of times you'll go in there with an issue and God is, the Holy Spirit is going to take that pastor down every aisle in that church. And so that pastor is not talking your business over the pulpit, but the Holy Spirit's responsibility is to deal with us. And that's what he does. And so I do want to do the next question here, uh, but Ms. Tony, we're going to come back and talk about the, the, the blended families. Cause she talked about blended families and she talked about the difficulties of blending though, when you have children coming into the marriage, because listen, the children feel like I got my place here. Listen, you the newcomer. You're the new person. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They feel like you the newcomer. I was here before you got here. And so that, that can be a challenge, you know, when it comes to marriage. But the third question, um, a question I am often asked, how can a woman submit if he is not providing for the home? This is a good one, y'all. Or should this be a prerequisite? prerequisite for submission if he is not providing for the home and lady nicole because you're the guest we're gonna ask you that question first so you just gonna throw me under the question <laughs> yes listen let, let me first say that i don't know that it's, it's not a prerequisite uh for, for submission but what i will say is i believe it should be a prerequisite before you marry this man if if he didn't have a job but for submission, no, ma'am. No, ma'am. If you are already married, because the Bible would tell us, wives submit yourself to your own husband so long as he provides. But the Bible doesn't say that. So that means it's not a prerequisite. No. But keep in mind, it should be a prerequisite before you say, I do. Do you have a job? So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, Miss Tony. <laughs> yeah, so a lot of cases. You first. I'm not touching it till y'all go to it. Right. And see, can, a lot of, a lot of cases. Submit. Yeah, a lot of cases that you get in the marriage and you know your spouse, it could be a male or female, whichever mm -hmm. spouse, um, can become disabled or you know things like that, and then it becomes difficult when if the if the if the spouse become disabled 
temporarily and then back on the seat and came work and you know it's limitations and then you feel like you're doing so much you so you so you know you you like burned down and overwhelmed and you feel that you know you may not want to submit as you did you know when he or she was working and making and bringing the money in the house right but this person has become disabled or something happened to where the money and the finances is not there but this person that you're married to your significant other still demand all this extra that they was demanding when they had a full-time employment or not disabled so then you become a nurse you become all that because it's part i go back to the covenant right so yeah <laughs> listen <laughs> listen okay so and let's not let before you go there. Let's not let's bring in the, the sexual part too. So when the disability come, that that person is able come in. Not only the finance is gone, but this person may not be there for you intimately. Grown folks, right? May not be there for you intimately. And then you got problems all over the place because you're thinking, "Wow, I'm married to be married. I'm married to be loved. I'm married to have, you know, uh, sex. I'm married to be taken care of." But everything changed. You know, what do you do? You know, it's so funny that she said that because um dr washington knows a little bit but for us my husband um that was the case for us uh he got disabled we were unable to be uh intimate for maybe nearly two years you know i was doing everything i had like you said i had become the nurse uh we also had a church you know so now it's like i'm, I'm trying to contend with the church of course eventually we just we closed the church down but i was still a wife and a mother so i'm still dealing with that you know, it was just a lot, like you said, and, and and at that point, you begin to think, okay, now, wait a minute now, you know, because now, and for us, I was a stay-home mom for all of that time, so when he went down, there was zero money. Everything just kind of shut down, you know, so that, that was, it was really difficult, you know, but like you said, and when I look at the covenant, and I look at my vows, you know, because I, I can remember, and since we've been so transparent, it, it, it was at that point when I really had finally decided I'm going to leave. Right before we found out that he had gotten this way, I had already decided I was going to leave. So as we were losing our home, I was thinking, I'm going to go over to my mom and you can just go wherever. But we found out about this illness and I'm having this big discussion with the Lord, you know, like, God, how can you do this? If you already know what my mind was, I'm thinking I'm getting ready to be free. What, what, what is, what's going on here? But it's so funny that 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 time became our most intimate time. And my husband was also blind. He had went blind. So he couldn't see, which caused me, like I said, to become nurse because now I have to wash him. I have to do everything, you know, feed him everything so but it became such an intimate time I, I feel like we began to know each other then more than we have all those years it was like man all this time you could see me and we were together but we weren't together now that we can't be together and you can't see me we're together I, it was it was it's just it's funny like that you know god is just the way he does things it's it's, it's just it's amazing. I'll just say that. But you are absolutely right, Miss Tony. Oh, you're so right. What I can say, uh, um, when I when I look at that question there, of should a woman still submit to her husband? Let me say this first. First of all, marriage does not create a husband or a wife. Marriage exposes who you are. Yeah, marriage is the great exposure. That's why we should go ahead. If if you're, let me just say this, and and this is one of the things that I've said, and you can believe it if you want to. I think the first thing that people need to be able, able to to do in dating is to be able to discern who you're meeting when you meet them. That's first and foremost. Discern who you're meeting um, immediately. First of all, know who you are, know what you desire. And then when you're when you meet someone, you need to have discernment at that at at the time of meeting. Before you go out on a date, you should already have some level of discernment. Okay. You need to be able to discern whether or not this person 
only wants to date or if they are seeking to be married. Okay, that needs to be the first, one of the first things that you actually deal with when you know what you want. First of all, I say for myself, I know I'm not a dater. So therefore, conversations with a man, I need to know what is your motive in dating or whatever. I'm not saying don't date, but what I'm saying is people will people will usually be honest with you on the first or second date. They'll tell you, they'll tell you just in casual conversation. Well, I'm not sure if I really want to be married right now. I mean, all of these things going on in this world and people cheating and all, they'll tell you in the first couple of, of conversations that you have with them, they will tell you whether or not they want to be married. Okay. What they tell you, you need to listen to. Because I, it's so many women, men will tell you, they'll tell you who they are. They'll tell you what they want. and But we made up in our mind based on attraction of what we want. Although he said, I don't want to be married right now. So we go further and no, stop right there. He said, I don't want to be married. Okay. So then you say, but he said, I don't want to be married right now. Absolutely. But he said, I don't care when it is. He said, I don't want to be married now. Okay. So then when he said, I don't want to be married right now. Okay. Then you need to go ahead and be honest with yourself. I don't want to be married right now. Does not mean I want to be celibate right now. So he's already telling you, I want to have sex with you, but I'm not ready to be married. These are the things that we need to stop ignoring when we're dating someone. Stop ignoring that stuff. It's a real, that's who he is. He said to you, I'm not ready to get married. Yes, he's saying, one day I'm going to get married. Okay, then he just said to you in your face, and it's probably not you. Okay, so when you know who you are, when you know who you are, I've always known who I am. I'm not a dater. I want to be a wife. I want to be a wife. And so when I'm talking to a man, first conversation, second conversation or whatever, you know what I'm saying? When I talk to Tigana, my husband right now, actually, he said to me, you are my wife in the, probably the second conversation or whatever. Okay. So then I was like, I don't know about that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That was in me, but but the reality is, is that the first thing you need to know who you dating, who are you with? You know what I'm saying? Once you get to know who you are, get to know who you are, and then you can go ahead and make a decision of whether or not this is somebody you can submit to. See, you need to know before you marry somebody whether you can submit to them or not. I can say in the past, when I got married, I knew I was not going to submit in the beginning. I knew that. See, this is stuff women don't want to be real about. You know what I'm saying? Even in, you know, in the, you know, in our, um, you know, getting to the place to where I knew that it was not going to be, you know, till death do us part or whatever. I had to also come to terms with myself that he was not the whole reason for it that I came into it with the wrong motive myself. You know what I'm saying? That's a lot of things people don't want to admit to, you know, uh, that's that's a lot of things that 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 we don't want to admit to is that a lot of stuff I, you know, we as women won't admit to that stuff. So I would say you you who you marry, you already know whether you're going to submit to them or not. You already know whether it's going to be easy to submit. And so the, the the thing that I would say to a woman, because guess what? When I married Tigana, I knew that I could submit to him. So then when the question comes back of submission, then I can't say, okay, I'm not going to submit or whatever. I have to go to God and pray. And I have to go to God and pray and say, um, and say, you know, um, I have to go to God and pray and say, you know what? Help me to be able to submit to my husband. You know what I'm saying? Help me to be able to do that. Because a lot of times, you know, 
what is wanted and what is needed and what is desired and all of that type of stuff. You know, we just have to. And then this is the thing, because God says to submit, guess what? He's going to honor your submission. And if you just trust him, be still and know that he is God. I'm telling you, he will fix it. He will fix it up for you. He will fix it up for you. Because ladies, let me give you a little secret. Men hate silence. Submit and shut up. I'm just, I'm being real. They hate silence. Even if they make a mistake, don't say nothing. Because your silence is their answer. When they come to you and say, babe, you think I should have did that? <laughs> That's an answer all by itself. It's I don't know, all- but I think that get me in trouble because some things I just can't be quiet on. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you know, I'm not going to say we're quiet. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I went to my husband at one point and I, I said to him about something that he kept doing repeatedly. And I told him, I said, okay, I said, let me just say this to you. I'm not wired with certain things. <laughs> I said, because I'm a pastor and because, <laughs> listen, now, now that particular wire is broke. We're going to have to fix that one because, because I, you know, there's some things you have to be real with your mate about and say, listen, okay. I'm, I, I can deal, I can deal with who you are, but this is the thing, this particular thing right there, I know you can fix it. And I'm expecting for it to be fixed because if you're expecting for me at some point to not argue about that, it ain't going to happen. It's not going to happen. It's just not going, I'm just letting you know in advance. So this is the thing. I, I, I showed him a meme early in our, early when we first got married. And when nothing was going on, and the meme said, you cannot be the hell in your house and expect peace. That, that's what it said. And he said, why are you showing me this? I said, I'm just, I'm, I'm just, this is a real meme. You cannot be the hell in your house and expect peace. It don't work like that. It don't work like that. You're going to have to have some peace. So as we, 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 we're not that far from our close, but I wanted to ask us this last question as we close. Now we can just go kind of quickly on it. What advice would you give a wife who loves her husband, but is challenged with trusting him? Lady Nicole, we're going to try to do that y'all in a minute each. trying to unmute myself y'all but um i would suggest to her um to remember that she's submitting herself to him and trusting him as unto the lord see that's where a lot of times we get tripped up because if you just submit to the lord if you just trust god then you can trust that man of god in in your life because remember that's who you chose that's that's who you said yes to even i tell people even if you didn't choose him and he chose chose you you said yes so you you received him but remember that you are doing it as unto the Lord. It's like I'm, I'm submitted to the Lord. And I tell the ladies all the time on our ministry and, and around that we're always looking for Boaz. You know, just I want a Boaz. I want a Boaz. And I always hear God saying, you want Boaz, but I have to deal with your ass. You know, why O-A-Z? Because you're not ready. You know, you're, you're, you're just not ready. You want that, but you haven't even submitted to me. There's, there's some things that I have desired of you as your Lord, and you haven't given it to me, but you're asking me for one of my princes. No, you're not ready, my love. You're not ready. So, yeah, I would just say to remember that whatever you believe in God for from your heart, remember it's as unto the Lord. It's just like you're doing it for the Lord. And if you do that, it won't bother you as much that I'm trying to trust my husband because I'm trusting him as I trust God. I'm trusting the God in him. Even if, look, even if I know, look, ain't no God in him. Well, you got to by faith believe that there is, you know, as unto the Lord. So if you remember that, you'll be okay. Amen. And Miss Tony, just a, a one, just, you know, short advice to the women. 
uh, someone who's saying, how how can I restore that trust or how can I trust my husband? I would say, for instance, with my situation, use an example, I'm very transparent, really quick. Like with me, my husband was a coach and I used to always accuse him and didn't trust. I had a problem with trust. So what I started doing was going out to the gym, going to some of the games and doing things with him and get familiar with people that he was around. And so that worked like excellent, right? So I would just say that um, communicate. You know, if there's some issues, trust issues, communicate. Let him know how you feel and sit down and let him know how you feel. Talk about it and um, work it out through communication. Communication is the key, I'm telling you. So if you could just communicate and let him know how you feel, those trust issues, uh, cell phones, whatever it is, communicate. Communicate is key. Amen. And, and just for me to just finalize that question of, you know, um, if you love your husband, but you're challenged in trusting him, this is what I, this is how I came into this marriage. Y'all know me and my husband make a year in May. We're embarking upon our year. Yeah. And the one thing that I determined in myself, I know a whole year. <laughs> the one thing I determined in myself is this. The Bible says, put no confidence in the flesh. No confidence in the flesh. And so what I told him is, I trust God. I trust God with my life. I trust God with you. I trust God with your decisions. I trust God with my decisions. And I trust God that whatever happens, whatever comes my way, that he can help me to, he has, a, I, I say this when I wake up in the morning and pray. I say, God, I don't know what's going to happen today, but I know that there is a divine solution for whatever is going to happen. And so I would say to the wife that's having a problem with trusting your husband, but you love your husband, mm -hmm. is understand this. You may have a problem with trusting him, but you have to trust God. Yeah. And if this is your husband, if this is the man that God has predestined this and has, you know, this is your covenant, then you have to trust God. You don't have to trust him. But you do have to trust God. And if you trust God, he says all things are going to work together for your good. God knows how to take lemons and make lemonade. So yeah. no matter what happens, no matter what you're going through, I say this as I close. I love Miss Tony. Um, I've been known, we now have known each other almost 20 years, seem like. And so um, just to know her life, to know what she's gone through with her husband to have literally been somebody, not there at the beginning, but I've been around long enough. And she has handled her marriage with so much grace. You've, I've never seen her yelling in the streets or yelling on Facebook or trying to defame him or put his name out there. No matter what he has been going through, she has handled her marriage with such grace. And I would tell every woman, that's what we have to do. Whatever yes. you're going through, Handle it with grace because you represent your father. And trust me, he got your back. He got your back. Everything that she's gone through, God has brought it full circle. And now yeah. she's enjoying her husband. She went through. But guess what? She's a living testimony that if you are that one that's hanging on, hang on. Because God is with you. He's with your marriage. He's for you. He's for your marriage. Listen, even if it wasn't a covenant. If that is what you desire, God will turn your lemons into lemonade. I'm telling yes. you. And so I just want to end our segment. Why did I get married? I want to remind you, you got married because that's what God desires. He said, it's better to marry than to burn. Okay. Yes. So all of you out there hanging out, telling me, should I get married? Should I get married? Listen, I'd <laughs> rather for you to be talking about me and, and, and dragging my name up and down the street because I'm in a covenant situation. And I'm married and rather than you, because what God told me was this. I say, God, why are you doing this? One of the things he said to me was this. He said, either you get in covenant or you're going to see your name in lights and you ain't going to want it there because you are not going to stay celibate. And so let me just go ahead, fix that thing so that if you see your name, you can ignore the mess and drama, but you don't want to see your name in another way. Okay, so get married. Let God guide you. And so we just want to thank you for joining us with the Promise Talk Show. This has been amazing. Listen, <laughs> listen. This
this has been awesome, awesome, awesome. Next yeah. weekend, my mom's birthday, so we we may have a replay. I'm gonna see. We gonna talk to my co-host, but I want to give a shout out to Boss Up Houston and Mission Mir Bacon for hosting the Promise Talk Show. We want to remind you that our scripture is 